live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Let's flash back for a brief moment to the year 2000, which was the very first year of the Houston Bowl, which was known as the GalleryFurniture.com Bowl. If you want to learn more about the history of that game, and just how bizarre it was, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, to give a brief recap of what happened, Jerry Ippoliti, the president and the CEO of the bowl game, in an effort to boost the bowl's reputation, announced three weeks before the game was set to be played that a whopping 28,000 tickets had already been sold. That's a great number, right? Except there was one small problem. Ippoliti completely exaggerated the number to the point where it was just a blatant lie. I don't mean that he said 28,000 when it was 27,000. I mean he said 28,000 when in actuality, it was 4,000, or about 87% less than what he said it was. The whole situation left a sour taste in everyone's mouth, and rightfully and understandably so. And after just one year, the bowl game had a massive reputation problem. And you would think, that this would be the last time that there was a ticketing controversy regarding a statement made by Ippoliti and the Houston Bowl. You would think that Ippoliti would have learned his lesson. However, that's where you'd be wrong. Because if I had a nickel for every time that an Ippoliti managed to tick off a bunch of people by making an ill-advised comment about the number of people at the Houston Bowl, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Because two years later, in 2002, during this game right here between Oklahoma State and Southern Miss, I believe he decided to do something really stupid, once again, ticking off a ton of people in the process. Because this is the story behind one of the craziest controversies in the history of the EV1.net Houston Bowl. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question regarding the ticket sales, we need to understand the matchup, and who the two teams were that had the responsibility of filling up Reliance Stadium with fans. In one corner, you had this team right here, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Oklahoma State had fallen on some pretty hard times as of late, and you can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, after going four straight seasons without a bowl appearance, in Les Miles' second season as head coach of the team, they got an invite to the Houston Bowl looking to win their first bowl game since all the way back in 1988, when they won the Holiday Bowl and had Barry Sanders on the team. After starting the season 2-4, they ended the season on an absurdly high note, winning five of their final six games, including a shocking 38-28 win against a number 3 ranked Oklahoma team to officially end any chance that the Sooners had at winning the national championship. Thanks to an offense that averaged over 34 points per game, ranking 13th across all Division 1A and its 117 teams, the Cowboys were absolutely firing on all cylinders, and were a fun team to watch, especially down the stretch, when they averaged 52 points per game over their final three games. Led by sophomore quarterback Josh Fields, who finished third in the entire NCAA with 31 passing touchdowns, junior running back Tatum Bell, who had over a 1,000 rushing yards and was second in the conference by averaging over 6.3 yards per carry, and of course, junior wide receiver Rashawn Woods, who was a consensus All-America selection after leading the entire NCAA with 17 receiving touchdowns, and after leading the Big 12 with 117 receptions and 1,695 receiving yards, putting together one of the greatest seasons by any wideout in NCAA history, the Cowboys absolutely earned their spot in a bowl game. And when it came to the Cowboys selling tickets for this game, there were no issues whatsoever. The Oklahoma State fanbase was buying tickets in spades for this one, and had no problem making the 500-mile trek down to Houston. They'd walk 500 miles, and they'd walk 500 more, to witness the Cowboys try and win their first bowl game in a decade and a half. The Cowboys initially got 10,000 tickets to sell for this game, and the school sold those out with ease. In fact, they sold them out with such ease that not even 24 hours after they went on sale, they were gone, 
and Oklahoma State asked for even more tickets. We were still 10 days away from the game, and Oklahoma State had already sold 16,000 tickets. And when we were just a week away from the game, that number jumped up to 21,000 tickets, more than doubling their initial allotment. As Jerry Ippolini said on Oklahoma State and their fan base's enthusiasm with this game, ticket sales are doing very well. I'm very impressed with Oklahoma State. So there was no problem with the Cowboys. At least when it came to 50% of the equation, everything was taken care of. As for the other team, oh man, that's where the controversy comes in because Oklahoma State's opponent was this team right here, the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Led by head coach Jeff Bauer, the Golden Eagles had their ninth straight season with a winning record, and went 7-5 in the regular season. Even if it was a bit of a disappointment with how the season ended, since they lost three of their final five games after starting 3-0 in conference play, it was yet another solid season for Southern Miss, thanks to an incredibly strong defense that allowed just 18.3 points per game, which was the best defense of any team in Conference USA, which was impressive, considering the fact that 5 of the 10 teams ended up finishing the season with at least 7 wins. Combine that with the strong running of Derek Nix, who had just under 1,200 rushing yards and finished inside the top 3 of the conference in rushing yards and yards per attempt, and it's no surprise why Southern Miss, once again, found themselves going bowling and above 500. And because of their play over the course of the season, and because they were the third choice in Conference USA behind TCU and Louisville, they found themselves in the Houston Bowl. And with that, it was time to sell tickets for the game. There was a general feeling of excitement about getting to play in this bowl game. Southern Miss Athletic Director Richard Gianni said on his fans, We need our fans to buy tickets through our ticket office not at the game. It is very important to our league and will affect our revenue. We are excited to be going to Houston, and we need help from our fans. And Dave Ippolini, the executive director for the Houston Bowl, was thrilled to have the Golden Eagles coming to Houston, saying, We have wanted Southern Miss for two years now. This team could very easily be 8-4 or 9-3, and, and they deserve to be here, and we are excited to have them. And when it came to ticket sales for this game, they reflected that. Were they as strong as whatever Oklahoma State was doing? Were they sold out their allotment in one day and had more than double that allotment a week before the game? Of course not. But were they still really strong by their standards and by the standards of Conference USA? Absolutely. The Golden Eagles only needed to sell between 1,500 and 1,800 tickets to break even on the bowl game. And they did that with ease. There were five teams in Conference USA that went bowling, as along with Southern Miss, you had Conference Champion TCU, Louisville, Cincinnati, and Tulane. And according to Gianni, with the exception of TCU, which played in the Liberty Bowl that season, Southern Miss sold more tickets than every other school in Conference USA for their bowl game. They were projected to get anywhere from 5,000 to 6,000 fans at this game just in terms of people buying at the ticket office, so not counting fans who bought while they were in Houston. That was right in line with what East Carolina did at the 2000 edition of this bowl game. And on top of that, the roughly 6,000 tickets sold by Southern Miss was right in line with what the Golden Eagles did at recent bowl games. When they last played in a bowl game, playing at the 2000 GMAC Bowl, they sold 5,000 tickets. And when they played in the much more prestigious Liberty Bowl last in 1999, they sold somewhere in the ballpark of 7,500 tickets. In other words, everything was going exactly as planned. Ticket sales weren't underperforming or overperforming expectations. They were right in line with what you would expect Southern Miss to do. So what seems to be the issue then? Well, Executive Director of the Bowl Game Dave Ippolini thought that this wasn't good enough. Despite the fact that they were literally performing at expectations, and everything was going according to plan, I believe he decided to put Southern Miss on blast for not doing more. As I believe he said on Southern Miss being on pace to sell the second most tickets of any of the five bowl eligible teams in Conference USA, and being right in line with what previous Conference USA teams did at this bowl game, I'm really surprised really disappointed. 
They've wanted to get here for three years, and I thought they might have shown more excitement at coming. I really don't understand what the problem is with their fans. Wait a second, wait a second, time out! Did the executive director of the game just flat out say, I really don't understand what the problem is with their fans? Did the executive director just make a statement comparable to that of a high schooler asking what their problem was? Not that a statement like that would be acceptable in most contexts, as there's a way to express disappointment without being that immature about it. But they were literally doing everything that was expected of them. Their sales were right in line with what they did for previous bowl games that were of a comparable status. Their sales were better than most of the teams in the conference during 2002. And you're out here blaming their fan base for not showing up? Why? This is like if I'm a baseball team and I go out and sign a player who over the last five years has hit 280 with 25 home runs. I sign the player in free agency and during his first season with the team, he hits 280 with 25 home runs. Then I put out a statement bashing the player, saying that I'm disappointed in how poorly he played, and that I expected him to be better, and that I didn't know what his problem was. Like, what else did you expect? He did just about exactly what the average person thought he would do. If you were dumb enough or foolish enough to expect that he would hit 320 with 50 home runs, then I don't know what to tell you. Southern Miss sold X number of tickets for each of their previous bowl games that were not named the Liberty Bowl, which is the marquee bowl game of the conference. And they were in a conference that typically sold X number of tickets for their game. And Southern Miss was right in line with both of those numbers. And yet, here's Dave Ipolini taking the absolutely brilliant strategy to bash the fans, which would surely create even more animosity and make Southern Miss fans on the fence about making the trip to Houston even more skeptical, since now, they have the perception that the Bull doesn't even want them there. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. No wonder this Bull game went under a few years later. You know it's bad when Jerry Ibelini, of all people, had to step in and try to mitigate the damage that his family member caused, saying on Southern Miss, they're doing the best they can. We're happy to have Southern Miss, and certainly, we like to see them have many people here. But by this point, the damage was done. Because the Houston Bulls' reputation, which was already in the toilet after whatever the heck happened in 2000, somehow plummeted even more as a bowl game that just did not respect its fans whatsoever. For what it's worth, as you can tell from these highlights, Oklahoma State won what was a very good game, winning it 33-23 in a game that was tied midway through the fourth quarter, as Oklahoma State running back Tatum Bell had another great outing, running for 160 yards and a touchdown on 12.3 yards per carry, while Woods had yet another great game in his historic season, catching nine passes for 164 yards and a touchdown. But as great as this game was, the off-the-field drama that was entirely preventable overshadowed it, since Houston Bull officials were more concerned about feuding with one of the teams playing than they were about the game itself. Let this be a lesson to people. If you hire someone to do a job, you lay out exactly what you expect, and what they do is exactly as you said, and is right in line with what the market is doing, then getting mad at them is probably not the smartest move, and is going to make you look really stupid in the end. Because in 2002, when it came to the Houston Bowl on and off the field, the Golden Eagles did not have a golden time. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.